But some people argue environmental improvements can happen with economic expansion. And these are the ecological modernizationists. Um, I wanted to show how different these people were. This is something I uh, copied from a book. 1970s, think of eco Marxism. People thought there is a zero sum relationship between protection and economic growth. People thought if we protect the environment, we'll damage the economy. But they said, beginning in the 1970s, no, no, you protect the environment, you increase the economy. That's a non Marxist view that began to develop. And states have designed new policies for this. In the 1970s, a Marxist view says dependence of economy on ecology was not a significant issue. The corporations or states ignore the environment, but now both the states and the corporations integrate the environment law. So the treadmill is not valid, it doesn't work anymore like that. Um, people were concerned about uh, what well, they thought very confident in science. Nu nuclear power is a very confident, supposed um, industry. But now people develop with a lot more precaution. They're scared. And they use precautionary principle for decisions that require going beyond science. Sometimes it's just too dangerous ecologically to do things. Uh, in the past, the regulation was all about regulating pollution from one factory. Now, states try to redesign and force themselves into the factory and say, you have to change your production process. We don't want to regulate pollution. We want to eliminate pollution. We want to change the system where your pollution is not pollution, where this product can go to another factory. Um, if you make a waste product that's acid, maybe that acid can go into another production. So it never the environment. These closed loop cross-media transfers. It's also called industrial ecology. So from, from an industry that ignored ecology to an industry that integrates ecology. You see how it's very different. It's very different than eco-Marxism ideas, where the environment is completely against the economy. And here, the environment and the economy are friends. Um, policy was supposed to protect the monopoly capital, but now there's a lot more competition. New patterns of ecological corporatism, where the environmental movements are integrated into the state. The regulatory approach, emission standards, now tradable pollution permits, they try new ways beyond regulation. And let's see, last one. Uh, in the 1970s, performance and monitoring, negotiated compliance, they never really enforced environmental problem, environmental regulations. And then um, they may recognize the problem, but that's still very hard to solve. Previously, regulations only on a national level. Now there's a lot of international regulations for the environment because many environmental problems, like Japan, obviously, is international. And uh, next time I'll quickly introduce a bit about Ulrich Beck. Ulrich Beck describes ecological modernization. It's a view of our entire societies being organized on risk Beck says, in the past, people competed for economic wealth. They still do that. But he says, now, they're also competing to escape risk. And he says, they're everybody wants to escape risk. And this makes a form of politics very different than a class politics. Because everybody wants to escape risk. So he argues these massive levels of risk from nuclear power from genetic pollution. All of these create a new kind of politics which encourages people to make a better world. He calls this an ecologically rational world. Uh, it's also very similar to ecological modernization. If you want to see some videos, look at your syllabus. And both of these have Korean subtitles. Uh, William McDonough, Cradle to Cradle Design, talking about redesigning materials. Like, 
if there's pollution? Well, it's not regulations. You need to redesign the system. It's not the economy is evil. Just redesign the economy. It's not growth is bad. It's change the kind of growth. Uh, Jenny Vinius, the world outside, she says, has invented over billions of years perfect examples of how to move materials. And we need to learn from nature the ideas of how nature does things with very little energy and very little pollution. Nature doesn't make pollution. Everything is used in the system. And uh, she has some ex excellent examples of many scientific institutions studying how a shell, a shell is formed in the ocean, and how you can make a very hard form of, you know, plastic or you know, a shell material without much energy and just in water with no hard chemicals, no bad chemicals. So you can redesign the world on biomimicry, mimicking the biosphere, the nature. Um, later, we can save this for later, but this is closer to my own work where I try to have a mix of eco-marxist and ecological conversation. My interest is in politicized consumptive infrastructure. This means uh, thinking about inconspicuous politics of materials and the cultural forms. Uh, as I said, I think about the conflicts between different kinds of energy, the conflict between different kinds of textiles, the conflict of material choice for the same use. And I think that's a lot of ancient and modern politics. Uh, I'll have a PowerPoint for that uh, later. But uh, thank you. And if there are any questions or something you'd like to say about one topic, please tell me. No? OK, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you for staying late. And thank you for coming on a different day. Some people, they told me they were coming, but he was in the hospital today. Um, anyway, so thanks, and I will see you on schedule next time. So we're not meeting. We're not meeting, obviously, on the 18th. The next time we meet will be the fifth month. Number two, it's on page 10 of your syllabus. That will be class session number five, where we'll talk about environmental racism and environmental justice research. That sometimes different ethnic groups have a hierarchy in a society, and the lower group experiences more environmental problems. And so environmental problems, they're not equally distributed, like Ord Beck argue. So I will talk a bit about Ord Beck, but then I will go into environmental justice.